All right, you guys, this is Ross. I wanted to talk about the gummyberry again. I wanted to really showcase this particular plant because we've, we've been talking a lot about it and I've always talked about its traits and different things that I really like, like the flavor, the production, the overall just general, you don't have to care for it. Uh, the fact that um, this particular variety has a larger size to it than other gummy berries. Uh, this, the uh, flesh to pit ratio is a lot better on this one. It's called Carmine. Really a big fan of this particular plant. And I featured this actually recently in my must grow uh, number of fruit trees or fruiting plants that you must grow in a backyard orchard. Now that it's in full bloom, I wanted to really showcase this particular plant because in this video, we, I wanna to touch on what are some of my most productive berry plants? because uh, I think berries are great. They're easy to grow. Just across the board, any of these berry plants that you can think of are just very simple, um, usually problem-free. The birds love them, the uh, critters love them, but there's definitely a varying degree and difference that I've noticed so far in the productivity. Um, this one is just a champ, I think. It's in the top tier of productivity. I've been saying that, and I wasn't really sure exactly how productive it was, but on every single node on this plant, it'll produce flowers pretty much. There's very few exceptions I've seen over the years, really vigorous shoots that come up from the base, like vigorous water shoots. They won't necessarily fruit that year, the following year, but they may fruit the year after. Obviously, if they get some age to them, they slow down a bit. Um, but just about every single node on here has flowers and you can really see it well. And every node, not only do they have flowers, but they're, they're somewhere around the four, four flower to about seven flower mark. So if you look at every single node on here and they're gonna turn into to fruits and they have four to seven flowers on it, do the math, you know, that's a lot of fruits. Obviously, not every single one is gonna have four to seven, but I think that's the average. The average probably per node is about, is about four. So let's just say, let's just conservatively estimate. You get four fruits per node. How many nodes are on this damn thing? I mean, they're so close together, it's crazy. You're gonna get so, I just, there's so many fruits produced on this bush. And I haven't weighed it, I haven't compared, I don't know anybody who actually has weighed it weighed a big harvest off of this that's a mature, a mature plant uh, off this variety and come up with a weight. But I would argue just for a backyard grower, the amount of fruit, the amount of times you come out here and pick it, it's really available all spring. It's so good. It's just very, very productive. This plant actually right here in front of me is the gooseberry. And I would argue actually it's about average. It produces a good amount of fruit, but it really only produces about one berry per, per node. So this is producing about four, this is producing about one. There's a difference in size. However, the four is about double the amount of fruit, maybe even 2.5 more times more fruit than this gooseberry. So you're getting about two and a half times more production than this gooseberry bush um, per node we're looking at. Maybe not just the overall size, which I think is, you know, that's substantial. That's uh, really incredible. So here's an example of the gooseberry here. It's now flowering. All right, so there's about actually two fruits on some of these nodes, two fruits per node. Let's say one and a half. So you may get about, if I had to estimate I would say maybe it's about double the amount of fruit you get on the gumi. And I'll zoom in here actually on the gumi. The bees love it, obviously. There's a nice little bumblebee. They get drunk and uh, they've been flying into stuff recently. But it's pretty insane. I, actually, I think it's a beautiful plant. I had some tulips planted underneath and it just is striking. This whole section of the yard is striking this weed whatever it is it's so difficult to get rid of i hate it but in the spring it's beautiful it gets these purple flowers to it it's actually really not bad but 
you know, back to this, uh, this Gumi, it really is quite a shocker. Here's about four flowers on that one. This node here has got five flowers. This one's here got about six or seven. So, and then you've got this, this side of the tree, which actually these nodes here haven't produced anything. And this is, uh, for whatever reason, this side of the tree is a little bit more sparse than the rest of it, but you still got plenty of fruits over here. Um, it's just covered, it's just loaded. The lower parts of the tree that are shaded, not as filled as fruits, filled uh, with fruits, excuse me. But overall, I mean, it's very, very productive. Now, let me show you another one that people are arguing for that is productive, and it, they say it takes years for it to become very productive, but this is the honeyberry. I've never gotten good production off of these, and I've had them actually, I've moved them around a couple times, so that's, that's part of it, but, you know, that's like, this is about right. You know, these yellow flowers contrast on this green. You can tell where the flowers are at, and it's just not, they're just, it's rather sparse. So I'll come over to uh, one that I have that's very mature, or at least the most mature one on my property. I think it's been here for like five years, maybe four. Not the sunniest spot, so that's, that's something to take into consideration, but the Gumi and the Gooseberry is not in a sunny spot either. I mean, so none of this is really getting a ton of sun. But this is like, it's pretty, it's really getting some size. I mean, this thing is probably three by three at this point at least four years old and the, the fruit is just not, it's just not here. Um, yeah, it's producing something. It's just not like anywhere close. The amount of space it takes up for the amount of fruit it, it, it uh, puts out, the age of the plant. I hope that'll change in the future, but I really just don't know. I don't, I'm not really expecting big things. Now, I would say there's one other winner here I wanna show you guys. But before I show it to you, I want to just make a point here. Right over there is my raspberries. They're insanely productive. You give them enough heat. You live in the south. They have enough soil temperatures down there. You got a long enough season. If you don't live in the south, put them in a raised bed. I get a pint of raspberries every day per plant. Um, and that's from, by the way, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's from about August all the way to frost. Um, you'll get that every single day per plant. The other thing I want to mention is actually this, this strawberry. The Mar de Bois will produce strawberries uh, as an early June bearing crop in pretty high quantities, good size. Then they'll stop for about a month after the June berries are done and the Mar de Bois is done because it's an ever bearing type actually. So it'll pick back up again from August all the way to frost, just like the raspberry I mentioned. Um, so the raspberry has got to be a fall bearing. I really recommend Caroline. You can't go wrong. This guy here, the Mar de Bois, it produces so many fruits, it's, it's insane. So the last one I want to show you though is the blueberry, because I think the blueberry actually might produce or might outproduce the Gumi. Um, however, I'm, I think I have the best yard you could, or at least there is nothing better that grows here than the blueberry. So I have a really great yard for blueberries and I don't, so a lot of you guys won't have the same level of success that I'm having, but I'll tell you, my blueberries are insanely, insanely productive. So we're right here on the main street unfortunately this is gonna be some noise but I'll tell you that uh, this thing is loaded and I have a couple blueberries back here guys or in the front side of the house that is absolutely loaded I have one two three that are filled with flowers and each cluster of flowers instead of the gumi having about four to seven the gooseberry having one or two per node per cluster of flowers per node, if you know you have a flower cluster on that node, because not every node's gonna produce 
fruit or flowers. But I would say in terms of just how covered it is, it's about as covered as the gooseberry and the gumi. But, uh, you know, perfect scenario, perfect world. You're living in blueberry haven because they're difficult to grow in a lot of places. I've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got about eleven. Maybe you could say as as low as four. But this is overall producing a ton of berries. Now the problem is, I've noticed with the blueberries, because this one over here on the on the end, I don't know if you guys can see me or not if I go over there, but the one on the end produces huge berries. Uh, don't remember the name. But this guy right here, I think it's Duke. I'll find the name for you guys in a second. But I'll tell you, this one right here on the end produces some huge berries. And it is wildly productive. So this one, I would say, is better than most Chandler. But these other two right here consistently produce a ton of fruit. The problem is, when you get a lot of flowers like this, they're just not very big fruits but the Chandler consistently is a large fruit. So I'm happy with Chandler overall production. I think it's probably the, probably the number one winner. You can't go wrong with like Duke or Jersey in this part of the country. I don't know where the other tags are on these other two, but I'll tell you, uh, the blueberry is very productive and I would, I would probably rank it right up there with the strawberry, raspberry, the gumi it's probably in that top tier with uh, the gooseberry being right below it. You also got the blackberry, which is insanely productive. So, uh, you know, it really does depend on your yard, your climate. You know, there's a lot of factors, but here in my yard, that's the deal. That's what I'm looking at. I think the blackberry you could put in that top tier as well. So, interesting. I did want to point that out about this Gumi because it deserves more attention. It's not talked about enough. And that's why I really wanted to showcase it with, it really is beautiful too. I mean, it's, it's striking. So we'll see you guys soon. All right. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, other berries maybe that you guys have, have tried and you think are very productive. Let me know. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you for the next one. Hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 30,000. Take care, guys.